All right, so we're going to be going, I know on the board I put quiz 10. It's actually quiz 11 because I noticed quiz 10 was, uh, week 10 was midterm and the week before that, so I've actually been miscounting for the past two weeks. The week before that was week nine, but we didn't have a quiz that week. Um, so we're actually on week number 11 right now. So uh, when we turn in homework on Wednesday, that'll be week 11 homework, okay? Um, we are going to do a review. If I'm correct, we have four examples. Um, and uh, we're going to be hitting both types of, uh, of questions, standard form and vertex form at the same time. Maybe not in every single question, but for a lot of them, we're going to kind of do a little bit of both. So um, just know that on your quiz, it's going to be the same way. They'll ask you for a certain question. They'll ask you, like, how does it look in vertex form and standard form? So uh, question number one right here. Um, it says, write an equation in vertex form. Now, just so you guys know, this part is not going to be on your quiz, okay? The part that I'm underlining, it's not going to say that on your quiz. But just know that they mean in vertex form because you can't do this in standard form. Only in vertex form can you do the left and right motion, up and down motion. Remember, uh, look at the definitions, right? The vertex form has the H and the K. The standard form does not, okay? So, again, I wrote it here, but that's not going to be written on your quiz. Now, the uh, vertex form they're talking about is the one that looks like this. I'm going to write it right here on the side just so that you guys uh, know what it is. Um, so, y equals to a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. And uh, they tell me that I should let a equal to 1 all the time. So, we know that's going to be a 1 and translates two left and one down okay so i'm going to go ahead and start writing it y equals a which they say is going to be a one times x now my h says two to the left so i should put what plus two right squared and one down i put minus one okay so there you go you're done with that problem it's supposed to be really easy and and the, on the quiz it's supposed to be really easy too they're not trying to make it difficult for you guys. Um, what about this next one? It translates four to the right and two up. Again, A is equal to one, so Y equals one times X. Four to the right would be minus four, right? Squared two up is plus two, and that's it. That's all you need to do, okay? Notice minimal amount of work. You're just basically writing in the right numbers in the right place, and that's it, okay? So are we okay with that one? Hopefully not too bad. I mean, we've had so much practice on this with the absolute value functions and stuff. It just follows the same thing. All right. So here's the second set. And you're going to notice I wrote two different portions, A and a B, but they look different, right? A is in vertex form and B is in standard form because they're going to ask you in vertex and in standard form. So find the axis of symmetry. A is supposed to be super easy, okay? Super easy because the formula for A is x equal to what? If it's in vertex form. That's for standard. That's over here. Negative B over 2A. That's for part B. But what about for part A when it's in vertex form? Just H, right? Just this. So notice there are two formulas depending on the type of equation they give you. So for vertex form, it's just x equals h. So this one's like the easy one because all you got to do is identify h correctly, which might be tough if you don't remember. But what's my h value? It's a positive 2. I know it says minus 2, but remember, h is always the opposite, right? So it's 2, and you're done. This is my answer, okay? That's my solution. B is the harder one because there's more work, right? So we got to know what B is and what A is. So let me write that down. X equals to negative. What's B? Well, it's going to be negative of a positive 8, but I get what you're saying, negative 8. Over 2 times what? 2, right? So we got X equals negative 8 over 4, which is negative 2. Notice you cannot use this formula, x equals h, on part b because it doesn't have an h term. It has an a, a b, and a c term, right? 
So um, we have to use a different formula for part B than we have to do for part A. All right? So are we okay with this one? Again, they're supposed to be easy. They're, I've looked at your quiz. I'm kind of writing stuff very similar. They're not supposed to be really hard questions or like that. So, um, you know, don't, don't worry too much about them. For example, number three, we're going to find the vertex. Again, it's two different types of formulas. The first one is the easier one, the vertex form. But the second one is in standard form, so that one takes a little bit longer. Okay, that's why I left very little space from between A to B. But from for B, I'm going to leave a lot of space because that one requires more work. So we're just trying to find the vertex. So I'm going to write the vertex form again over here just, just for the sake of you guys uh, seeing it. All right. So vertex form, uh, it's HK, right? My vertex is supposed to be H comma K. This is my vertex. So all I got to do is identify H and K in this equation. So what's my H? Negative one. What's my K? Negative four. And that's it. You're done. Remember, those last two lessons we've done, there's a lot of information, but very little math you have to do, right? Unless you have to do part B. Part B is a little bit tougher, okay? So, um, so let's go over part B. Remember, for part B, we have to find the vertex. In order to find the vertex in part B, this is the way it's defined. If you look back at the notes, that's the way I defined it, which in other words tells you you've got to do two steps. First step, find your axis of symmetry. Second step, plug that number into your equation to find y. So two steps, okay? So first step, axis of symmetry. So I know that x is supposed to be equal to negative b over 2a. So my b term is a 2. And my a term is a what? Um, what's my a term? I don't see it. It's a 1, right? If you don't see it, it's going to be a 1. So here we go. So that's going to be negative 2 over 2. So this is negative 1. Now you're going to get that answer and you're going to plug it in to your equation. But for now, you know that your vertex is a negative 1 comma something. That's what I know so far. It's negative 1 comma something. So I'm going to plug negative 1 into my equation. So to find the vertex, remember guys, when you use your calculators, make sure you guys use parentheses when you're plugging in negative numbers. So you're going to want to put a parenthesis, negative 1 squared, plus 2 times negative 1, plus 3. Uh, your calculator should give you a 1 minus 2 plus 3. So that's going to come out to 2. And that's going to be your vertex. Are we okay with that problem, uh, finding vertex in part A and part B? Because I, I think we're on our last example and then we're done. We have two in the last example, but uh, it's going to be graphing. So we're okay? We're good? All right. Oh, no, wait. There's five examples, but this one's super quick. So find the y-intercept. What letter, A, B, or C, is my y-intercept? A is my amplitude. C. C is my y-intercept. What's my C value? Negative 10. So I'm going to write y-intercept is negative 10. That's where it crosses the y-axis at, at y equal to negative 10. 
So it's the very the number at the very end. If you're thinking, what's the y-intercept? It's the number that doesn't have any variables attached to it. Okay. And if that number is not there, let's say there was no minus 10 there, what would be my answer? It would be a zero, right? Because it's supposed to be the number that's by itself. If it's not there, it's a zero. Okay. So in our case, it was a negative 10. So that was it. That's all you have to do for number four. So find the y-intercept, look at the number at the end, the one without the letter, that's your y-intercept. If, if it's not there, that means it's zero. All right, so we got two of these, okay? And then we're done. So graph the following. Um, I'm going to pause it right now just to give you a little bit of time. All right, so for part A, the reason why I say this is the easier one is because in order to graph, you always need a vertex, and then you need two points, okay? Um, for us, our vertex is pretty obvious in vertex form, okay? Our vertex here is what? What do I put for my vertex? Anybody know? What's my HK? 2, 1, right? So I'm just going to put a dot on my graph right there. Now I need two more points, okay? Do you guys remember how I used to find those two points in vertex form? Sorry? I use the slope. I am going to use the slope. Where's my slope? What number is my slope? The A term right here, the 2. That tells me from my vertex, apply the slope. That's a positive 2 over 1. That means I got to go up twice once over from my vertex so up twice once over is right here and then i flip that and i'm wondering if that's what you meant i'm going to flip that number to the other side and that gives me my second point okay so i'm going to just write really quick my slope m equals two okay just so you know which is basically a equal to two so you just connect your dots and you're done So that one's supposed to be the easier one. Just find your vertex and then uh, find your slope, which is your A term, right? And that'll tell you what to do from the vertex, okay? Any questions on that one? All right, and now part B, I know I gave you guys some time to write this down so we won't slow down for this. Um, I gotta find my vertex again, but we already saw that anytime you have it in standard form, your vertex requires the axis of symmetry. It requires your y value. You got to find those things. Then you can um, start graphing. So let's find my axis of symmetry here. So x is equal to negative b over 2a. Negative of b being a negative 2. Notice how I wrote minus 2 on there, right? Negative of a negative 2 over 2 times 1. So that's a positive 2 over 2. So x is equal to 1. So that's my x value for my vertex. Okay? Let me try to find my vertex now. I know it's 1 comma something. So I'm going to plug in that x equal to 1 into my formula. y equal to 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus 2 so that's uh, 1 minus 2 plus 2 well that comes out to 1 so my vertex is 1 1 so I'm going to go to 1 1 right here and then I got to find out my next point where do I find the other point here? Because remember, for this one, A is not considered your slope anymore. Right? So where do I find my other point? It's in my, it's in my equations. The C value, right? I'm going to use the C value. My C value is where it crosses the Y axis. According to my equation, it's going to cross at positive 2. So I'm going to go to the Y axis at positive 2. And I'm going to put a dot right there. 
okay? And then from there, I'm going to do a dot on the other side, right? Because this has to reflect. So it's going to reflect to this side. And I, then I can just draw my graph, and I'm done. So this is what your quiz is going to look like tomorrow.